This is National Native News. I'm Antonia Gonzalez. People gathered at City Hall in Cleveland, Ohio, Monday, calling for the city to recognize Indigenous Peoples Day and drop the Columbus Day holiday. Members of the Native American community rallied with a group of council members urging for the change. The Lake Erie Native American Council is joining in support of a proposal to designate the day. Not all city council members in Cleveland are backing the move. The non-binding resolution by Councilman Bashir Jones now goes to the city council for debate. Other cities in the state already celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day on the second Monday in October. A group of Democratic senators plan to take the Senate floor Tuesday afternoon to draw attention to violence against Native women and the need to pass key legislation. Senator Tom Udall, vice chair of the Indian Affairs Committee, will lead back-to-back speeches. The senators are seeking the reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act, which includes tribal provisions to protect Native women. The speeches follow Sunday's National Awareness Day on missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. An Alaska Native community of 800 people is gaining ground to become a top cruise ship destination. That follows heavy investment by the local village corporation, which has transformed a defunct seafood cannery into an entertainment complex. Jacob Bresnik reports. Executives from Norwegian Cruise Lines visited Huna to participate in the groundbreaking of a second cruise dock designed for the company's two megaships deployed to Alaska. Senior Vice President Howard Sherman says that Huna's beautiful setting and thriving Alaska Native culture is what convinced its corporation to invest. This isn't just another destination. It's the culture um, and the people that make it special. And you can't buy that authenticity. You can't build it. You can't put it in a t-shirt shop. You know, you can't put it in a jewelry store. So, you know, we are so excited and so honored to be a part of this, and I thank you. Huna elder Kenny Grant says there are deep ties to the forested uplands that will be the site of a cruise ship dock starting next year. To us, this land has a spirit, and we're going to treat it properly. Early on, cruise visitors numbered in the thousands, but this season will bring more than a quarter million passengers on 137 ships. The second dock adds even more capacity. By the time it's done, the destination could see upwards of 400,000 cruise visitors a season, that made some Huna elders at the ceremony uneasy. Stuart Mills works as a seasonal bear viewing guide. He's worried that bringing in too many people could dilute what Huna has to offer. See, our town's only 800 people. So we get 5,000 people on this ship and 5,000 people on that ship, that's 10,000 people. We're going to have buses running everywhere, people running everywhere. And And it kind of might hinder us because of the fact that we won't have enough for all the excursions for people to do what they want to when they come here. The Village Corporation is mindful that feelings are mixed here. When the project was announced in December, the Village Corporation said it would hold public meetings in the winter. That didn't happen. Huna Totem CEO Russell Dick says they still hope to do public outreach later in the year, but he believes history won't judge its organization by its profit margins alone. Because if it did, we're no better than any other company out there. Reporting in Huna, I'm Jacob Resnick. The names of three officers have been added to the Indian Country Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Monument at the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center in Artesia, New Mexico. A recent ceremony honored fallen officers Nathan Graves, Curtis Blackbird, and Joel Townsend. More than 100 tribal, state, local, and federal officers are listed on the memorial. I'm Antonia Gonzalez. National Native News is produced by Kiwanak Broadcast Corporation with funding by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. From northern Minnesota, Red Lake Nation Foods is pleased to support this show and share the bounty of the harvests, wild rice products, and wild fruit jams, jellies, and syrups produced by American Indians and available at redlakenationfoods.com. Support by Ramona Farms, offering wholesome and delicious foods from our heirloom crops as our contribution to a better diet for the benefit of all people. We are honored to share our centuries-old farming and culinary traditions online at RamonaFarms.com. Native Voice One, the Native American Radio Network.